This video is brought to you by Novata. More about them later in the video. It was March 15th, 2018, when a 940 ton, 145 foot long pedestrian bridge in Miami collapsed. And this was just days after it being moved into place and sitting on the piers where it should have spanned between. And unfortunately, crushing cars and taking six lives. This was not a freak accident. It was a systematic failure between design, construction, and oversight. What if I told you that this bridge collapse wasn't just about the design of the concrete and steel, but one tiny little detail? A phone call, a crack, an unanswered message that turned this bold and innovative project into a tragedy. This bridge was pitched as a symbol of innovation using a new technique that aimed at installing large prefabricated elements rapidly to minimize traffic disruption. The pedestrian bridge was designed to be built with accelerated bridge construction or ABC, where the bridge would be constructed off to one side and moved into place, just taking one night to span the 145 meters. While it has a striking resemblance to a cable state bridge, it's far from it. It's actually a pre-stressed concrete truss or a reimagined I-beam when you look at it in a certain angles. You can see you can have holes through it, but it does resemble that I-beam shape that we all know. The diagonals line perfectly and aesthetically up with the cable stays that are there just for appearance. The National Transport Safety Board pinpointed the failure to calculation errors on the main deck spans in the nodal regions where the sliding resistance of the joints, specifically at joint 11 and 12, was overestimated, meaning the sliding resistance to stop it from staying in place was weak enough, meaning that you could have a sliding failure at that location. And to make it worse, there was already a pipe going through that region, further reducing the capacity of that joint. So that's where the calculation for one specific region on the northern end could bring disaster to this one single bridge, that this could have been even picked up and maybe even remedied, or at least moved back into place before the catastrophic events occurred. So let's find out a little bit more. At first, like any of these things, the cracks were barely visible. But by March 10th, they created a major separation in that node. In just five days after installation, these cracks grew to 15 millimeters in length. Do you know that's 40 times? That's four zero times what would be deemed acceptable in any construction. So this would be considered major damage. Then on March 13th, the project's lead engineer and left a voice message. In the message, he messaged about those cracks, those 15 millimeter cracks, and that repairs were needed. And he ended the call that from a safety perspective that they were not concerned. Unfortunately, this message was unheard. And even then, based on the call, what actions would have been taken? And with it, the urgency faded over time. On March 15th, all the key players gathered at the bridge to inspect the cracks and were informed that the cracks were growing day by day. The lead engineer couldn't explain it. Surely if something's cracking, something must be wrong. But he even still insisted that the bridge was still safe and traffic kept flowing underneath the bridge through all this time. And there was no additional support to try and prop it up. The bridge, like the decision, was literally hanging up in the air. So like I always say, if you see something, say something. Doesn't matter where you are because it can always lead to a better result. At 1.45, Workers climbed on top of the bridge to tension up that critical node. And with that action, that node blew out, blowing up that connection, causing a catastrophic punching failure through the diaphragm. That was the one critical link that created that whole bridge to collapse, crushing the six people below it. The span collapsed in seconds, despite the photos, the warning signs, the calculations, everything was there for you to know what was happening. It all went unheeded. A disaster was visible in plain sight, but it was not acted upon. At this point, you can see that a minor crack ignored can lead to a catastrophic event. But what if it's not just in that single crack, but cracks in how you actually learn to design and communicate design flaws? That's where the sponsor of this video, Novatar, steps in. They are not your generic online course. It's a cohort project-driven platform for architects, engineers, and construction professionals. Their BIM professional courses are for a lot of people within the construction industry, teaching you the whole project life cycle, from clash detections, RFIs, to project delivery, using a variety of softwares from Revit, Navisworks, Dynamo, and even AI-driven workflows. 
Their flagship course is not just a short one-off course. They're a seven month in detail course teaching you between 4D, 5D and 6D where you have a mentor to take you through this whole course in a one to 20 ratio. It's a dual approach where you're learning from industry professionals from Sadar Hadid, Acom and UN Studios giving you an industry guide where you can have a day-to-day -day feedback and mentorship. At the end of the day, you get more than just a certificate, but a portfolio-ready structured capstone project that allows you to show to employers that you have the skill sets to detect clashes and see issues with projects before they actually happen. With over 6,000 learners from 45 countries who have already transformed their careers with an average salary of increase of up to 48%. Head over to Novatar.com and take your career to the next level. So what did the forensic knowledge find after the fact? We did learn about some of the issues earlier, but what did they actually find? The OSHA's report included an FEA model that also showed the evidence was seen on site that a very overstressed node was the key point of failure. The academic investigations have further validated this finding, revealing the key collapse mechanism and the need for detailed and thorough peer reviews, especially on key projects of such innovation. The tragedy wasn't just technical, but it was an emblematic failure in engineering judgment and process. We had the peer review that didn't pick up the key critical failure, warning signs, and decisions led more by consensus than concern. It's a striking reminder that even though with advanced techniques, analysis, and project demands, that we still need to make sure that we decide our decisions based on concern and ethics and what should happen, because a tragedy could just be around the corner. In the wake of this tragedy, industry protocols were re-evaluated, specifically around peer reviews, construction holds, and proper structural inspections, hopefully leading to safer constructions in the future, but at the cost of six lives, 10 injured people, and the emotional toll. And sadly, this wasn't the first, and unfortunately, it's probably not the last. And if you do want to learn about more events to make sure that your designs are safe, you can learn about the tragedy on I-9, which had a similar outcome. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, keep learning, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.